Welcome back to Let's Play in the Girl Prophecy. Um, we're gonna be starting now. Okay, we're in the museum with Mr. Kiriakini, and uh, yeah, I guess this would be the last episode of, um, last part or something, I, I'd say. Facade of Sacrificial Temple. Origin, Yucatan. Origin, Yucatan. Ah. All these things seem pretty much accurate to their, um, you know. Feminine figurine found on the Pacific coast of Guatemala. Oh yeah, I guess they do their research about all the stuff. Hey, it's a bonus card. Uh, only five? Okay. Yeah, you can, like, you know, look at all. Head of statue representing Itzama, discovered in Chiapas. He's reading it off this card. Cardio, even though there's no card around here, he's gonna read it. <laughs> he can't possibly know all of this, right? A circular altar that was probably used in sacrifices. Early post classical period. Post classical, I'm dead. Oh man, I'm an art student. I'm not, I don't even know what post classical means. Oh yeah, I know what neoclassical is in terms of. Oh, I can't go up the stairs. In terms of art and stuff, should be around before Christ. <laughs> I haven't taken art classes in a while. I'm forgetting everything. Uh, let's just take a look at this dude here. Head of statue representing Itzama, discovered in Chiapas. Oh, I think I've seen it before, right? Hello, Professor Kiyakin. Kiyakin. Stone stele from Palenque, post-classical period. Post-classical. This fresco, a two-headed serpent, the same shape that I carved on my forearms the night of the murder. Yeah, probably. Hey, what is that? That's a painting behind it, right? I don't know what that painting is. Um, so yeah, any of you guys viewers know what post-classical is, what date it is in something? I have a, a clear idea what it is. It's definitely not 1700 or 1800. It's something like, I don't know, 1000 or something. Post-classical is a pretty long thing, really, man. Professor Kiriakin? Yes? My name's John Cunningham. We spoke on the phone. I'm a journalist, and I'm gathering information for an article I'm writing about the Mayan religion. Ah, yes, I've been waiting for you, young man. What, um, what paper did you say you write for once again? He's testing me, he's testing me, National Geographic. I write for National Geographic. I failed. It's, uh, it's curious, but your face seems familiar to me. Have we met somewhere before? He joking. Yeah, I get that a lot. Uh, I guess I must have one of those boring faces everybody sees everywhere. Well then, let's uh, have a go at it. <laughs> Where would you like to start? Can you tell me anything about Kweknitlan? Of course. Come, I'll introduce you. He'll introduce us to Kweknitlan. That's cool, let's go. Ah, so this is Kweknitlan. You see before you the ancient Mayan god Quetnitlan, the serpent with the two heads. One head sees in this reality, the second in the other world. By opening both mouths, the Mayan oracles could see through the serpent into the other world. Oh, other world. Could you explain this other world? Oh, the world beyond our own, the kingdom of the gods and the dead. The Mayans believed that human sacrifices allowed them to hear the voices of the deceased and see into the future. Sacrifices. Tell me, how did the sacrificial ceremony work? Come, I'll show you. Notice how he's walking. It 
It's like he's joking with us about his walks. This painting, dating from the first century BC, shows a sacrificial ceremony. The victim's agony must have lasted quite some time. The priority being to keep the mouths open as long as possible. The victim was stabbed three times, each wound cutting a pulmonary artery leading to the heart. How did the ritual sacrifice work? Oh, the oracle must never soil himself with the blood of another. That is why he chooses a sort of proxy, another person in the crowd, totally at random. This person becomes the executor. The oracle takes complete control of the executor, manipulating him from a distance. What happened to the executor after the sacrifice? He went mad and committed suicide after accomplishing his part of the ritual. A Mayan sacrifice. That's what it was. You aren't a journalist, are you? Who are you? I'm the truth. My name is Lucas Kane. The police are looking for me about a murder that I did not commit, but I was the executor. You're a murderer? I'm innocent. I stabbed someone I've never seen before three times, cutting his arteries, just like you described. Do you mean to say that there is a Mayan oracle still living today? But, but that's completely impossible. Shuffle on, man. Have you ever seen this symbol before? Oh. It's the symbol of Quetnitlan. The executors cut this into their own forearms before accomplishing the sacrifice. So, it is true. My God, the Codex was right. The Codex? What are you talking about, Professor? You can't stay here. Your picture is in the paper that the security guard is reading. He's sure to recognize you. Come, let's leave here, and I'll tell you all about it. If you go over there to the security guard, well, you, you can imagine. Thank you for your help, Professor. Get ready, people. Watch out, Professor. Oh no, something's wrong with the Professor. Run for your life! No way I could have dodged that. I failed. Oh man, gotta do it all over again? Uh, Alright, well, we still have three lives to do this. Oh, jeez. I got so many lives left. <laughs> Failing. I am failing. I lost three lives already. I don't know how I'm supposed to do this. Huh. Yeah, three lives already. But as you can see, I only have one life left, and if I screw up that left and right trigger thing again, I'm gonna face the crazy monologue of my life thing. And yeah, that's gonna be boring, somewhat. But if I'm correct, if you start over, you get your four lives back and start all over again, I believe. Was it three? I forgot. Anyways. to do it.
life left. I'm screwed. Professor! <laughs> forward to meeting you. Few men are capable of resisting an oracle. What is there so different about you? The chroma. You have the chroma. So that explains it. How did you ever acquire such a power? No matter. What matters is the time has come for you to die. Why me? Why choose me? Pure chance. The executor is always taken from the crowd. It's a great honor for you to be chosen to serve Courtney Klein. The chroma. The chroma? What does that mean? The force that created the universe. The origin of everything. It gives extraordinary powers to those who possess it. Enough talk. Other matters await my attention. We will see each other again. In the other world. I saw that coming. Oh, shies. <laughs> That's one crazy panda bear. Nah, it's not even a panda bear. I like calling great cuddly things panda bears. Okay, it's probably not as cuddly as a panda bear, but it's cute. As long as there's no left and right things, then I'm fine. One more screw up and I get to face my monologue. This reminds me of Shenmue 2. Near the end. <laughs> the running scene. Hey, either way. Running through the nature, through the woods. I run. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! This is not as bad as the car scene. <laughs> yeah, that's my church sermon. Oh shit. It's the chrome at work. searching for a little girl, a perfectly pure soul that's never been incarnated. Her coming was foretold by the most ancient prophecy in human history. She's the one you see in your dreams. You must find her before the Oracle does and put her someplace safe. Hurry, there isn't much time and they are already back on your trail. He has escaped you again. First in the museum lot. A big mistake, the museum lot. And then in the wave. What's worse, you showed yourself openly to him. And all for nothing. It's just... I was unaware of certain factors, my lords. Which factors? 
He possesses the Chroma. That's impossible. Idiocy! How could he possess the Chroma? I know not, but it is a certainty that he does. This is how he resisted my psychic attacks and successfully evaded the police. This could force us to change our plans. This is serious, very serious. Serious. That is not all. Someone has intervened. What do you mean? While you were with him in the wave? Yes, my lord. Someone brushed aside all of my attacks on Kane and protected him. It was not one of ours. Certainly not. No. I think it was something else. Its chroma was... different. Another clan? That's impossible. Only we are left. We have a rival. Who searches for the indigo child as we do. They must not find the child. That would be a catastrophe. A disaster. Kane is on their side. Unless they are just using him. He is the key. He sees through our eyes. He must not find the child. You must deal with this problem. Definitively. I have already taken measures. He will be definitively dealt with. And soon. Do not disappoint us. You may leave us. Oh, well, so we do know there's a clan of some sort looking for this indigo child, and man, oh man. <sighs> the Oracle is in Marcus's church. There's not a moment to lose. I've got to warn him or he's dead. We should wait, Carla. Backup will be here any minute now. No way. This time I'm gonna get him. That desk guy swore to us that he was in his room, and he's not gonna get away. Are those spirals? I hope that guy didn't screw up when he said he recognized Kane's photo from the papers. He looked so blind he wouldn't recognize his own mother in a phone booth. <laughs> we'll find the answer in room 369. Okay, 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 369, but if I remember correctly, no, I'm not going to warn him, I gotta leave, if I warn him, Lucas is dead, and I leave this place, I know it's not a time to be watching TV. Getting you new on Air Force, we shut down today. All flights are canceled for an indeterminate period due to the massive cold wave, which has... <clears throat> I'm gonna try doing something different, really. If I try calling him, it's game over for me. But what happens if I don't do anything? Going into an infinitive hole of some sorts. I can't leave. Three, six, nine. Here it is. but I'm not dead. There's a difference between wrecked and dead. I know there is. Nobody go! Ah! Uh, Either he's gone through some changes since the photo, or this is not him. Shit! What the hell happened? Calm down, girl. I think there's been a slight misunderstanding. down the hall somewhere.
Down the hall this way then. Alright. I don't want to kill my brother, so I'm not gonna wreck him. I'm not gonna wreck him. Is this it? 369. Hi there. I think the bird has flown the coop. I'm gonna find him, Tyler. I promise you. Come on, let's go. Is he up there? That is a little bit weird. It's like he's Spider-Man. Oh, I'm depressed. Who's calling me? Unfair. I'm moving towards my death. Everything that I've been through since the second I entered that diner, all of it was leading me to this moment. I was tired of fighting, running, and hiding all the time. I was losing anyway. There was only one thing left to do. Try to save Tiffany's life. After that, I decided not to fight my destiny anymore. Lucas! Lucas, help me! Er, yeah, I, I hear Tiffany. you, Tiffany. She's at the top of the roller coaster. I have to find a way up there. It's amazing how she knows I'm here. actually catch that um, homeless dude there. Um, yeah. Supposedly, these guys... Okay, I'm not gonna spoil any more for you. Oh, right. Ah, bonus card! Yahoo! Got a bonus card. Lucas! Lucas, help me! I'm sorry, man. I couldn't say you. supposed to go. Hello? Lucas! No! Lucas, help me! Oh, okay, yeah. I found you, I found you. Wow, okay. This seems to be an old-fashioned fun fair. <laughs> Look at that roller coaster thingy. Yeah, let's do it. Somehow it knows how to stop here, so... Mm. It looks like it's a taxi cab of sorts. Go away, Lucas! It's a trap! They're gonna kill you! You said save me, so what do you think I'm gonna do? Run away? <laughs> Alright, let's be careful. If, if, if we fall from here, we're dead. Pull the left trigger and right trigger to maintain the cursor in the center to maintain Lucas straight. Okay... <laughs> Oh, 
never do it, and don't do it at all. That's what I would say of myself. Just be a bit careful about it. Oh no! Oh, no. And that's how my story ends. Officially, they call. Officially, they called it a suicide. Oh yeah, they kind of reuse these sentences, these monologue things. Okay, I was so close, so close. Ah, oh, jeez. Yeah, I get it. I get. It. it gets harder when you get it. I just realized that myself. Yeah, this is really ridiculous. Gotta be very careful about this. And I know I can do it. Oh, I did it. Great. It wasn't that hard. <laughs> I freaked out in the first place. Oh, right. Okay. You want me to do it? I'll do it. At least I can save someone. I'm depressed. one of these things. Alright, I'm gonna wrap it up for today. Um, it seems that Lucas Kane fell to his death or something. Uh, I'm not gonna spoil it for you guys. No, I'm not. But I do have to go. Um, yeah. Next time on Let's Play Nigel Prophecy, we're probably gonna go with the Oracle because we did play Lucas a little bit. Ah, I was right. Yeah, that date thing, it's, it doesn't come, um, it doesn't really tell my real time date, but it, it tells the game date. So, for now, it's around February the 1st, I would say. Two days until my birthday, if you think about it like that. But, alright, yeah. Our character was wrecked. He was depressed, but now he's wrecked. And so is our brother. Well, at least I think that's what happened to our brother. But... Alright, um, see you next time on Let's Play Nigo Prophecy. Bye.